Hello and welcome to the Talking Wealth podcast here. I'm Doug Hill. I'm the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. And today we're going to go through the second or part two that uh, you so wanted of the top 10 stocks on the Australian market that Janine and I went through. We did a spreadsheet with the first lot of the top 10 via market capitalization. So today's talk Today's podcast is about the second 10 stocks in the top 20 on the Australian market. But before I get too excited and carried away, I better introduce my co-host, Janine Cox. How are you? Fantastic. And yourself? I'm great. I'm listening to Planes Above Head and Rains before. It's going to be a fun <laughs> podcast, isn't it? But oh, I know yeah. we've got some great stuff. We had a lot of people I mentioned on the podcast that we did about three or four weeks ago. It was mm. the top 10 stocks or stocks. I think it was titled Stocks to Watch Top 10 Stocks. Yeah. Uh, the video. So if you haven't seen that, go and see that. We introduced a spreadsheet mm -hmm. to people looking at all the history of the stocks and their performance on a yearly basis since inception mm. of that stock on the index. And people loved it. But we did say we would do the second 10 if they all wrote us in and asked us for it. Yes. Well, they not only did that, one of our viewers of the podcast and on the YouTube video uh, picked up that I wanted some help with my spreadsheet. And you needed it. And I needed it. Um, I'm not a spreadsheet guru. I can get around and do it all, but I generally find people to help me do little bits and pieces. But he went and helped, tidied yeah. up the spreadsheet. I did offer the spreadsheet to our Talking Well subscribers mm -hmm. on my market wrap about uh, a week or so ago. I said, if you're, so if you're a Talking Well subscriber, mm -hmm. I'm not going to give this spreadsheet to anybody. You have to be a subscriber of Talking Well. So if you're listening to this on a podcast or watching it on YouTube, I'm not going to give it to you unless you're a subscriber of Talking Wealth. Yes. And if you are a subscriber of Talking Wealth, then you're going to have to share the video, yep. this video that you're watching on YouTube, put a comment on there, mm -hmm. um, and then um, ask for the spreadsheet. But I've also asked it them looks for a like, testimonial. It looks like an accountant's done this spreadsheet. It's well, so it well does. done. I don't know the student, but the student did actually do it. So, so we're going to do the next... 10, so I don't want to go. That's exciting. Some great stocks in this 10. I don't want to keep waffling on because I think they're excited as we are to get into the top 10, but yep. uh, or to the, or the next 10 in the top 20 you stocks. Never. Never happens, does it? <laughs> but I know it's been a bit challenging. Be before we get into the spreadsheet, I know it's a bit challenging, challenging for people to find out stocks in different mm. indices. Mm -hmm. And we, oh, yeah. you know, they're going, oh, how do I find the top 10? You go to the S&P and you think that's the source. I should be able to find it there. And you can't. <laughs> yeah, it's a top secret. Even I can't find it on the <laughs> S&P 500, uh, S&P yeah. um, website. It's so hard to find. There are the a few data. websites, as we found, that do have them. Yeah, but you might get a different um, list. Maybe list. one stock different. One mm. or two stocks different. Because obviously the All Lords is reweighted. So all the indices are reweighted on a quarterly, quarterly basis. basis. They are. Um, so it could be the list that you've got hasn't been has has been updated mm. or it maybe not been updated depending on the web and where you actually go. So what's your best tip for people to find it? Go to your broker. I would say broker. they have to have current information. Well, they do. That's the best yeah. source, and they'll have the, the top twenty if they're any good. If their website's any good. If they're any good, so if they don't have it, they're no good. <laughs> find another broker. Find another broker according <laughs> to that. I mean, I know it's easy for us. We just bring it up on Optima on our charting software because mm. theirs is actively updated all the time. Yes. So, so last time we went through a whole lot of stocks. I'm going to put my glasses on. So we went through. Yeah, you so need we, those. <laughs> yeah, I do need those. So we went through BHP, CBA, CSL, yep. NAB, Westpac, ANZ. Macquarie, Fortescue, mm -hmm. Woodside and West Farmer. So if people didn't see that, they can go back and watch that video. Yes. Um, and again, tick the like button and subscribe to our channel, everything else that helps. Um, so now we're going to go through the next 10 on so the list. So which one are we starting with? This is well, exciting. Well, we're going to start with Telstra. Um, okay, good and choice. So this is exactly as the student provided it to me. Now, again, as I said. There's no specific order. There's no specific order. I think they're in order of market capitalization, but I'm not 100% sure, but I didn't yep. go and check it. But I did check the stock in that, mm -hmm. and that's where I found I went, oh, geez, you've got all these, you know, some indexes you go to, they've got slightly different stocks in it. So that's why I'm saying you know, I have the same problem as everybody else. Um, so let's get into Telstra and have mm. a bit of a look at it now. Do you want to explain the spreadsheet before we go on too much? Um, on the left-hand side, obviously we have the date and we have the open high and low and close, which are the data points for any single, um, this is each year. Mm. So the, obviously most people are thinking of bar charts, they're thinking daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts, but there's also the open high and low and close for the yearly. Have you ever looked at a yearly chart before? It's quite yeah, interesting. I do. 
um, when you've got all, enough history anyway. Oh, especially when you've got the All Lords. I mean, we've yeah. got data on the All Lords back to, mm. you know, 1900 or, no, 1875. 1875, and, and yeah. And now we've got mm. back to 1900. And you can't not look at it on a yearly basis because <laughs> otherwise it's just a shed load of bars. That's right, all dots and it all, it all just gets squashed up. Okay, so then we've got the, the gain in dollars and the percentage gain. Um, in the fi- final column there, you can see all the red and where it's gone negative in those years. So 2000, 2001, 2002, you can see a lot of negatives there. Of course, the market was pulling back, so big stocks like Telstra would. Then you've got the summary of the gain and uh, loss percentage, uh, which is really an interesting little table that he's put mm-hmm. together there to help us along. So he's put the negative returns at the top, positive returns at the bottom. So uh, it, it's explaining that the number of times or the number of occurrences that th- these ranges occurred, so where there was a negative return between minus 10 and minus 20%, which is the fourth one down, uh, there were 13 times where that occurred um, and number of occurrences um, in that range were eight. So occurrences over all the years, 23.5%, and then occurrences where there were negative years 47% of the time. So it was like 50% of those were pretty much in right. the negative territory, which is interesting. So, And then we've got positive returns as well. So across all of those ranges, which he's, he's done it incredibly well, hasn't he, in terms of the detail he's provided? It is. So over the 34 years we've had Telstra in our marketplace, geez, it doesn't seem like that long, does it? Gosh. You know, 34 years because obviously it floated back, you know, back here in 1998. Mm. Um, it floated on our market and obviously we had multiple tranches of Telstra as the government slowly sold it off. Um, whether you love that idea or not is another different thing. But it just shows you over 34 years we've got all of his data. So this was the summary of it of the 34 years. Telstra's positive was positive in a year 50% of the time and negative in a year 50% of the time. So it's, it's basically flip a coin and Telstra will either go up or down. And well, see, get see, that tells me that it's a, definitely a trading stock. Correct. It's not one that you would just sit on, buy and hold. And if that that's a good as good a yardstick as anything to mm. help investors work out which shares are better for their long term portfolio. Totally agree with you. Now, obviously, what he did, he took on my saying, well, let's look at the last ten years, which is what mm. we did in the first spreadsheet um, on our initial recording. So, what he's done in the last ten years on Telstra is the number of years with positive returns now down to twenty nine point four percent, and seventy percent of the time in the last ten years. Mm. It's gone down. Now, I get excited about that. I know because that means a turnaround, That means it? a turnaround is going to happen and <laughs> yeah. it's going to go up. So I do think Telstra is long-term bullish. Now, he's also – this is part of the reason why he helped me. He, I said I wanted to do something like this. Mm. So he's the, the student's done that for me. I thought that's great because I was going to have to work out how to get the spreadsheet to do that. But then I wanted a graphical representation so you could actually see visually what mm. was going on and how negative or how positive it is. And this is those same um, things, you know, like uh, minus 10 to minus 20%. It does that a lot of the times. And you can see the eight values there. And obviously on this one here, zero to plus 10, um, it's six occurrences that it's have had. Yeah, so but, this is interesting to compare mm. to different stocks like mining stocks to see Correct. where they end up. Because if you're going for high growth mm. and you, you're, you're not worried about income, Mm. then you wouldn't pick this. This is sort of medium of the range. It's, it's for, still can have good growth at times, but it's a trading stock. But it's, it is. if you compare that to, say, a real or BHP, probably completely different. Yeah, and we'll see that when we look at some mm. of the other stocks. But what you're looking at here is if I could draw a bit of a circle, I'd draw it around here because what that's showing you is this is not a super volatile stock because most of the positive and negative gains are between 0 to 20%. Yeah, it's not going to minus 40. It's not going to minus 40. Mm. It's not going, you know, massively plus 40, that sort of stuff. Think about brambles. That would be in that category. Well, that would be. But we've got to remember this is yearly, so 1 January to 31st of December. So if Mm. we did it on a a financial year, we might get different data Mm. because obviously depending on where you measure it, you're going to get different data. Um, but this is telling me this is not a volatile stock, which means when it's going up, you go with it and it will be a nice stock. And I think... Um, Telstra is looking really, really good at the moment. And you can see here again, he's more, done some more graphs here about annual ranges. So it's a little bit easy to see when you're looking at a graph there for it. The last column is just some of the data the, that he's got there. But looking back over here, you can see here we've got three years, three years, four years. And you can really tell that the last 10 years, this has been really, really negative. 
So we are due for a turnaround on Telstra. So do you want to go and look at the chart, chart of Telstra, the actual bar chart of Telstra, and talk about it? What if I said no? That would never happen. I don't think I've ever heard you say, oh, I don't want to look at charts. I am <laughs> bored with charts. I am so bored with charts. I don't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to stamp my feet and run out the door. You've never okay. said that. No. No, it's unlikely to happen. It's one of those questions that don't need an answer to. It's mm -hmm. like Janine just wants to look at charts. Yep. So let's bring out the chart of Telstra. This is actually James Hardy, but let's just go to Telstra and have a bit of a look at that. Mm. So what do you take on Telstra at the Looks moment? Looks beautiful. It does, doesn't Changing it? personality. Yeah. Mm. You know, and so we can... And that's what we saw in the data, but you just have to look at the chart to tell you that. The chart tells you, and you can mm. see the data here, and you can see why we're talking about this more of a, as a trading stock. Now, it's a trading stock that you could put into your super fund too because mm. it pays reasonably good dividends. It's not going to kill you on the downside. That's the important one on this stock. You're not going to get those huge big drops. It's not a buy and hold stock. But it could it become more of a buy and hold stock? You look, there's not enough history to tell you that you can hold this long term. How much history and do you be want? successful? Well, it's, it's, it's been so much time <laughs> going down. So what do you do? Well, it does because it you know it fell something but like sixty two percent down in. In here. saying that, with the stuff that we teach in the course, mm -hmm. students can get a very good picture of where it is in. In the long-term sense. Even the people Whereas who are on the trading mentor. Long-term investors who have no idea about the technical analysis have no appreciation yet unless they start doing this study of where the stock is in its big overall pattern. Mm. And so I guess what we could say is even though in history this was a dog stock being, a, you know, such a high frequency of negative years, mm. going forward the – Pattern's actually telling you something completely different. Oh, look, if you look at here where we are right now, you look at that, you know, there's a whole lot of resistance around that sort of level. So it's above all of that. It's mm. above that previous high that we saw there back over here. So it's above that previous high. It's moving up and mm. I love this stock. So if you've got a, I, I would say a medium term outlook at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're looking at a good blue chip portfolio or super portfolio, this mm. is one of the stocks that I'd be putting into my portfolio. Yeah, I agree. So do you want to go to the spreadsheet again and look at the next stock? Or do you uh, want to keep talking about Telstra because I know look, how excited I think, you are I think about we've it. – are you planning on going back to the spreadsheet each time? Is that the plan? Because yeah. if we are, can we just stick to two things on that spreadsheet? If I have to. Yeah, so first is the table – five or six things. First is the table on the left. Yeah. And the second is the graph on the right. Oh, yeah, but I took more time with Telstra – Cause you need to explain it. needed to explain it for people. Otherwise we'll be here all a, day. It's a new look table <laughs> for people because they saw the first one and that's this is the new improved version of it, not the Dale Dunn version. Of okay, it Dale Dunn version. So, like so, it. so go back to the spreadsheet. So okay. Let me put it back on again. Do you want me to do that so you, you don't have you, to reach over? Well, I am reaching over too far, so let's bring it up. So let's bring out the next one. So the next one's ResMed, yeah? So let's... Okay, now I'll zoom it up because I know you're good at not like showing people everything. So if you are watching this on, uh, listening to this on a podcast, an audio podcast, go to YouTube and you can see everything, all the data that we're talking about here okay, uh, and the stocks and the charts and everything else. So please go and do that. And while you're there, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, um, share it with your friends, ready? tell your grandmother about it. Are you ready? No. Okay. Okay. Let's get into it. So you're looking here at the all white and very little red. It's nice mm. to be able to see those colours and see and straight away you can see there's plenty of years of upside yeah. in this historically. So if we then slide across Did to you the notice, graph. You notice one thing. What happened to ResMed during COVID? Um, it wasn't as volatile as other stocks. Go and have mm. a look. Go and can go we just wait until we do this first? It's in order. But mum. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's have a look at this. Can you see the graph there, Dale? I can see the graph. I've okay, got my glasses fantastic. On. I can see all sorts of things. All right. So we don't have as big a swings on the downside we as don't. what we saw with Telstra. Mm. That's one thing. And we've got way more upside. Look at the consistency of the upside. It's beautiful. So therefore, we know we've got a stock that's not only a nice trending stock, but it's a stock that's potentially mm. going to be more reliable and maybe easier to trade, uh, particularly for beginners. Uh, at times it can be more a little bit volatile. We've seen there were a few, um, it says two occurrences here mm. where we actually saw zero to negative 10%, but you wouldn't be concerned about this stock, would you? Nah, I'd love to have this stock. Mm. You know, it's it's one of those stocks you just, you can put in your portfolio. So it's, you know, in its early years, mm. in the 2000s, you know, not before 2010, it's probably a little bit more patchy yeah. and a little bit more frustrating because it had the potential but didn't get going. But the last few years, you just go, yeah, this mm. is a good stock, isn't it? All right, so and let's have a look. It is a turning into a CSL. 
No, I want to show you a bit of the data going. No, you're just I moving on. Remember I asked you if we could look at something over the side okay. just to see what happens. See, in the GFC, we, this is the GFC year, wasn't it? Yeah, she, yeah. The GFC. GF, GF, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. GFC. The, sorry, the COVID year. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's easier to say than GFC year. It was actually it made, positive. It actually made 23%. That's pretty good. So it might have fallen out a bit a little bit, but this thing its just, recovery was really quick. This thing was kicking goals beforehand. It was. And then it kicked goals afterwards. So but what look stock. what's happening though. The last two years, mm. including this year so far, it's 7%. Do you think that mm. it's more likely to repeat that or is it going to change now? Well, maybe it overshot you mm. know, back after the COVID rally all that sort of stuff but again it's, that it's actually been that, it's they? actually lagged so because mm. it didn't have the big pullback yeah it's actually just gone sideways like a lot of the healthcare mm. stocks yeah so mm. maybe there's a there's opportunity there so you can go and have a look at the chart now if you oh, like i'm itching to get back to the chart oh, i know that all right now you haven't put these in order for me where is it oh, do you want me to do everything for you oh, just type goodness. in rmd seriously it's there. it's there you do it no oh, look do i have to teach you how to drive as well <laughs> so where is it? Where is it? It's not even in there. What are you doing to me? I don't know. It's Let probably me... not even in the top 20. <laughs> well, it's on the spreadsheet. I know. All right. So. Okay. I love that. Now. That looks awesome. That looks interesting, doesn't it? Now, for a while there, we thought it was going to complete a pattern and end up down here at $24, $25. Mm. But it's a bit patchy in this rise. Oh, I've got to get rid of that cross here. Good. It's a bit patchy here, this rise. Uh, and it's had one, two, three, four, five, six weeks up. So historically, it might go up for another couple of weeks before it turns down, but it would make sense because there is a bit of resistance there. Mm, I so like it, it I looks do like nice, it. big picture though, doesn't it? But that's one of, that's, yeah, and I think this is the way this has been setting up the last couple of years, That's that tells me that this thing is, as you said, lagging behind a little bit. I think it, it's going to take off and do really, really well. I do like it. But it also highlights what I was saying before mm. in the podcast, how trying to find the top 20 can be a little bit hard because I yeah. found about four. I went to about four different types of websites, including S&P, Market Index, um, and looked on Optimal, what mm. Optima said. And the Optima, and they get their data directly from the source. So, But I had like four different stocks. I would have stuck with Optima. The top 20. Yeah, and, and I was going to and I thought, well, then I need to add some another stock or two into this spreadsheet. Mm. But I thought, well, let's just do the spreadsheet because we had S32 was one another one that some said it was in the top 20. Mm. Um, obviously, ResMed was there. Um, my other one was James Hardy in there as well. All right. So it may not be the perfect. So time. so this is another stock which we like, obviously, and, mm. and I don't think we really need to say any more, but I'd be a bit concerned if it took out this low down here. I don't see that happening right now. I but don't if think it that did, either. well, it's sort of surprised here because it mm. set up beautifully and we thought it was going to take off. Mm. Okay. And um, we were really tempted to pick it up at that time. And we thought, well, I'll just wait for one more week, see what happens if it um, clears That's where you this. Wait for confirmation. Clears this level here in on the 18th of May. Now, it didn't. It actually went through, but very temporarily and reversed. And so we sort of breathed a sigh of relief that we didn't pick that up. But How many times does that happen? Uh, yeah, it can happen all the time. Mm, that's um, why that we stocks wait for do that. And, and proper rules. Look, sometimes you will get tricked into a trade mm, mm. by the market. The market will just push it through, and it'll close above, and then mm. they'll go and sell sell it mm. off the in the next couple of weeks. So mm, that can happen. You've just got to be aware of it's part of trading. All right. All right. So next that's one. Resmed. Next one. I'm not making this easy for you because I haven't got the optimal right. in order. But now, these, are, these are in. Okay, order. do you want to expand that up for us? Oh, I can do that. I'm, it's on your side. I'm, I'm the expandable man. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we're looking at Woolworths. Now, Woolworths is an interesting stock. It's been very defensive over the years. Yep. And where the market's had big corrections, so it's all pulled time, back 31 less. years we've got, 67. 31 years. Yep, 67% yep. of the time it's positive. Okay, 60%. And the last 10 years it's gone down to 60 And 40%, which is not too bad. I mean, that's not something to scoff at. Mm -hmm. it's a re it means that you can actually have it as a, a trading stock or and an that's investing. Up with, that's it, up with the top 10 because mm. one thing I've figured and I found from all of the websites I was visiting for the top 20 is the top 10 was not in conject. It was just all the same. Yeah. It was the second 10 in the top 10 that we got those mm. two or three or four stocks that might have been a little bit different depending on when they're updated and everything else. Yeah, true. So um, All right, but, now – so looking at that, we can see that that's the number, the result, but in the last 10 years. But looking at overall, it still looks more positive than negative, Absolutely regardless does, whether yeah. we're looking at, you know, the detail of the data or we don't need to see the detail to know that. 
And then we come across here to the frequency of these annual returns. Again, it stands out. We mm. can see it's had big dips here, but only down to minus 10. So the six occurrences there, uh, minus 10. But it has had a few where it's gone 10 to 20% under, three. Three. Most of them are positive, obviously, because we had that. It's not bad. Three times balance in, we can see was in it the, 39 years or something, wasn't it? Was it yeah. 39 years? So Whatever. you'd be thinking again, that's probably a pretty good stock, pretty reasonably safe just by looking at Another this data and not looking at the chart. Another one because mm. it's not going to kill you. And, you know, it does perform consistently. Perform. Now, we need, to, we need to clarify this, right? Because yeah. people will be thinking, okay, Dale said um, blah. Dale says listen to Janelle. However, we know... <laughs> We know that from time to time, mm -hmm. stocks will go through a different phase. They do. So we've seen big stocks and we think, okay, BHP mm -hmm. was never going to, you know, people might have said, oh, BHP, you should always have money in BHP. Yeah. But then look what happened when the, the, the mining crunch came and that area of the market was down from 2011 to 2016, a yes. big fall over mm -hmm. a long period of time. So it can happen to any stock in any sector, even Woolworths. Oh, it does. I mean, obviously, you know, I was just sort of explaining here. So from Woolworths, you know, we've got data back to 1999. Mm. And if you look at this, this period here, you can say, well, wow, you know, there's nearly a decade. It's had one negative year and it's had gains of 62, 33. Mm. People would have gone, this is a freaking awesome stock. Yes. Okay. So there was, out of that 10 years, only one year was negative. If we go to the next 10 years and we look at that, so then we've got here one, it's two, very three. very patchy. Four years it was only positive, six mm. years it was negative. So obviously it flipped right around and that's what you're talking about, about mm. train changing personality. And this is where this sort of data that we're looking at can really help people understand what kind of stock we've got. You know, I was starting to doubt you this morning, but you've just shone right in that moment. Did uh, you look, know I, that? I've got this little button on me. I just flick a switch every now and again. and <laughs> You turn your brain on. <laughs> thing just comes out of my mouth and sometimes <laughs> I'm not sure what it is and but this does happen. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay. my foot comes out of my mouth and other times it's other things. I'm going to use this material in future. You know that, don't you? You use it all the time <laughs> and you use it against me. As, you know. All right. So let's flick over here back to this yeah. uh, chart. So we're pretty happy with that as an overall um, for Woolies. Yeah. Okay. So let's go and have a look at the bar chart now. Okay. And see if I can find that quickly. There, go. there we go. All right. So we've looked at Woolies and we can see there it has actually um, picked up pretty much all of what it you know, most of what's lost, maybe about 70% of what it's yeah. lost since mm. this low in here in November 2022. Uh, looking there, it's probably only just jumped through a trend line recently on the monthly mm -hmm. and it's, it's gone a long way. So would you think it was going to pull back for a little bit now? I would think we'd see one or two, one, at least one month down, mm. if not two months down. But that's not unusual for the mid part of a year anyway. For May, yeah, May, for June. May, May June mm. that we see a lot of stocks do fall away because we talked about seasonality charts. I know we yeah. brought them up on the live show last week. Well, let's have a look um, back and I here. About this is, him in this was before the week. GFC. So there's yeah. May and June mm, down. Down. Mm. So I wouldn't be surprised if I saw that on Woolworths, but I do like this stock. And looking at that, you know, the spreadsheet and everything else, you've got to think, well, hey, this is another good one. Yeah. When it does move, you just stick this in your portfolio and you yep. know you're not going to have a heart attack when no matter what. When the yeah, market when the market comes going, back, yeah, it comes mm. back. All it's right, it's going to look after you really, really well. Yeah. So we're moving on to another one. Now we go to another one. It's TCL. TC Transurban. Yep. And I'll do this for you. Oh, aren't you good? I, I can't. <laughs> there we go. I won't give you a gold star yet. But that's oh, I pretty couldn't good. see that little cross <laughs> thing, and it kept the little um, toolbar kept popping up. I'm not cross. I'm just no, not necessarily just angry. excited at the moment. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So you're looking at this here from 1996, we can see a lot of white, but it's fairly balanced, mm. isn't it? You get these mm. big blocks, like you were showing before on Woolies, we had this period from 96 through to 2000, that's four years of nice rises. And then this whole period where it just did nothing again, 2001, I think and it was. During that period, sorry. That I, was a bullish period on our say, market. That's exactly what I was going to mm. say. That's the most bullish period we've had on our market. Yeah. You know, so this, is, this stock seems to move contrary is what you're yeah. identifying. I mean, you would expect, you know, this to mm. just go ballistic as the market Well, let's going, see if the, the same holds th true. So we had a really nice rise from 15 to a, to before COVID hit, but there were it wasn't really hugely mm. negative then, so it's not consistent. 
And then we've got the volatile period through here. It's a bit choppy on and off, but and all in all, doing so far, it's not so diabolical. Okay this year. I mean, that data's mm. not complete. The last the last line on all of this is not yeah. complete because we haven't finished twenty. Well, it's just gone up this but week, out, I think. It just out of 28 it. years, 64% positive, 35% negative, which is what we're showing over here, 64% positive. Last 10 mm. years, dropped a little bit like most of the stocks uh, outside of Macquarie and CSL yeah. in the first recording we did. Yes. Um, they went up or maintained, but pretty much all stocks in the last 10 years have had a less mm. I won't say win-loss ratio, I'm just saying positive-negative return okay. um, on, a, on a yearly basis. So currently the last 10 years, 60% positive, 40% negative. Again, so another one of those safer one. stocks. But that's still mm. really safe and it's still really, really good. So let's go and have a look at your graph and you can but talk look at that. Better. That's a bit out of balance though, isn't it? You've got eight mm. occurrences there to oh, minus the 10. Yeah. But a bit more consistent on the positive side, but not they're not punching the lights out. No, it's not punching mm. the lights out, but it's consistency. So what would you rather in a portfolio, consistency or stocks that just punch the light out every now and again? Oh, definitely consistency. Mm. However, I mean, this sort of, it sort of helps to explain why investors should invest in the top 20, mm. doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Because mm. it's sort of that story, you know, would you rather one dollar a day for 30 days or was it, a, is, or 500,000, one, one dollar doubled every day for 30 yeah. days or half a million dollars or whatever it was and one dollar doubling every day it worked out to be more money. Okay. So, but it depends though because if you got that whole amount, you're saying at the end, you get it at the end or you get it at the start? No, that's just, you're just asking well, I'm too many it. questions. Like if I got that, well, that big lump sum the at the start, thing. imagine what you could do with that. <sighs> the d can you imagine like a dollar a day, like watching the paint dry, isn't it? For 30 days. If you get a dollar <laughs> doubling, your dollar doubles every day. Yeah, no, I've seen At the that. end of 30 days. So you, you have seen it. Now you just mm. give me a hard time. I am. All right, now here we go. I can go, go home for that. You know that. I know you can. <laughs> okay. So what were we on? TCL. Yeah, trends. Uh, here we go. So there we go. TCL on the monthly. If we just bring this, that up. Look at the move this month. That's that's brilliant. a big move. So it's just broken out above a lot of that resistance there, which is great. Mm. So that's that's got to be nice a sign now. Post. That's a really nice sign. Yeah. Post. So same sort of thing as here. So we had this huge solid sideways move, and then it went mm. up for a number of months. But yeah. look, I just would be interested to see how far it went up. Uh, let's say above the initial high there. So it made 33% gain. It's not huge no. in terms of these rises. So if it manages to make a 33% gain above this high, you know, we're talking, I'm not saying it will, but then it, that's above $20. Hmm. I can't see it necessarily doing that in the short term though. No, but I think it's a nice looking stock at the hmm. moment. And I think anybody that would have this in this portfolio would be hmm. quite happy with it at the moment. Yep. Um, and I think it'd probably end up the year very, very good. Mm. Um, and obviously we've had a couple of months up. This month's been pretty bullish so far. So a nice strong move. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it move up a little bit further and then just come back and sit its head on this sort of level through here and yep. then take off again. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it did that, but okay. uh, do um, like it. Do like it a lot. It looks a bit stretched though on the mm. weekly chart. That's though, what I mean. Short it should, term. I think maybe it'll mm. pop back a little bit yeah, okay. and then start to go again. Because look how look how volatile it tends to be, or it looks it it in terms of very choppy. But again, another one that you just yeah. wouldn't have to worry about in your yeah. portfolio too much, would you? Okay. And this is the stuff we talk about in my book, how to beat the managed funds by twenty percent. Yep. You don't need to be Einstein or a rocket scientist to make money out of the stock market. You just need some simple rules. Yep. And maybe you're not going to punch the lights out with a fifty percent mm. return on your portfolio. But you're going to get consistency and consistency yeah. allows you to compound and compounding allows you to make a shed load of money yep. over a longer period of time. And and you know if you're trying to punch the lights out, and that's the whole story of the tortoise and the mm. hare that we talk about in the book as well, you know, the tortoise okay. always wins because he's not trying to punch the lights out. Yeah, I agree with so you completely. Just depends. All right. So let's have a look at this. We can see that this is Rio. Now we're on to Rio. We're on to Rio. Now Rio Your obviously has stock. a few more dips and they're bigger which is interesting. Yep. Okay. So, so we've got 39 so, years of data on Rio. So we'll go over here and have a bit of a look at what's going on to the, yep, the summary. So, but what surprised me was in the last 10 years, mm. we still got that 60-40. Still got 60-40. Yep. But look at the positive years over the whole history. 30, over 39 years, 69.2% per positive, only mm. 12 negative years in 39 years. So yep. that's, that's a so good you record, gotta, isn't it? And this is where, this is the, how do I say it? This is the, the reality. It's like people can't argue with data. That's right. This mm. is facts. And often people go, oh, the stock market's risky. Oh, I don't want to, you know, they're too volatile, blah, 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 blah. And the whole BS just comes out of people's mm. mouths because they've been fed it by the industry. But when you show data like that, people go, oh, 
yeah. I can buy Rio um, and have a positive year seven out of ten times. The only but is where they start to invest. Yes, which is why they need to do our So it course. depends on where the data starts. They need my book. Go and get go mm. to the website, wealthwithin.com.au, get how to beat the I don't think a lot of people 20%. really understand that. Like if you just draw a line on well, the chart. Instead of getting my book for free, they've just got to pay the shipping. <laughs> what I'm saying is if you drew the line in the sand mm-hmm. at, at the GFC, at the peak of the GFC, yeah. and then you worked out what the return was versus what it was after the low, you know, yeah. occurred. Mm. Chalk and cheese. It is chalk and cheese. So not, we're not saying to buy and hold. I'm just saying these sorts of stocks are great. Mm. They're going to give you confidence that you can actually do it because right, really so look, anybody can at, make money. Have a look at Rio. Okay, yeah. so we're, we're seeing the um, exposure. A lot more red on that left, left, left hand side. Yeah, so that it? means the risk has just gone up. It's a lot higher. Okay, than the other stocks we were just looking at, but mm. the potential gains are a lot higher as well. Correct. It's got more green mm. on the right hand side, so that's absolutely so not necessarily for every portfolio. No. So what would you suggest people do? Um, I would suggest decide on what mm. risk you're comfortable with and knowing that it can mm. swing from over. Well, it's, it's about mm. having, knowing that this thing, even in the last 10 years, has been 60% positive. It's about knowing that and going, well, if it's having a down year. Chances mm, are next chances year. Chances are next year is going to be bullish. Do well, I let's I just go back just to that data and have a look. Because, yeah. because it is such a volatile share, it only had two years here where yeah. it was negative and that was 14 15 this was during the crunch mm. that happened into the long term low for the mining um, so if you're a trader crunch. you'd get out so look, mm. just to compare that if we go back to what happened in the GFC it was down 71% 70% but it had risen 80% the year before yep and it rose 145% the mm. year after so so interesting isn't it does contemplate this give that you com- is, i mean listening to this on this podcast does this start to give you confidence and part of the reason why Janine and I constantly say, just look at these big stocks mm. because it just, it it astounds me that people just want to look at crap stocks all the time True. and hopefully they're going to make a fortune when all they do is make their job freaking hard. All right, let's go to the next one. Mm. Now, that was TCL. Yeah. Uh, we've got to find Rio. Can you see Rio? There it is. Wow. That right. Was quicker than Miners that. are pulling back at the moment, which presents uh-huh. an exciting opportunity. It does. So we're going to be talking more about that on the show soon. I just wanted to save it on for the, the opportune, show. yeah, for the opportune time. Okay, but now's not the time. So we're just waiting for that pullback mm-hmm. to unfold, and then after that, I'm expecting that what we've been talking about with the miners long term will mm-hmm. start to see. We will, we will, and this is obviously we bring up BHP Rio, those stocks, Fortescue on a mm-hmm. regular basis on our live show. So if you're not watching our live show on um, Talking Wealth. Um, get on but this to is it. where you we can see the these types of, of stocks, YouTube. you know, because this yeah. one is a lot more volatile and we saw mm. it on the graph straight away, not a buy and hold. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so you see from here, 2011, that's what I was talking about before, mm. all the way to 2016, 2016 and the biggest falls, this, this stock had one of the biggest falls in the GFC well, of some did, of these bigger shares. Well, way more than the market, 81%. That's so, massive, isn't it? You know, that would make your heart tick a few but, bit yeah, faster, yeah, we're talking it? about here's your COVID move down through into here, isn't it? Mm. Sorry, where is it? I'll get my point on that's your COVID. It wasn't a huge big move and it took off again. Yeah. So that was pretty good. Mm. Um, but looking good at the moment, just right. easing off a little bit, but I do like it. All right, let's go to GMG. Goodman Group. Okay. All right, now we'll just. Oh, you're going to zoom up. Well done. I've taught you well. Oh. 2005 through to now, obviously we've got a whole, years, yeah. a whole string of losses together, mm-hmm. right, all around the time of these the GFC. So obviously it, it suffered funny. a lot during the GFC and then even after the fact as well was really struggling to get going again. So that's mm-hmm. something to bear in mind and that's property, isn't it? So Yeah, and then like makes nine, sense. But nine then look years at this. of good positive returns right Huge. Through. Yeah, and then now we've just had one year again. Interestingly, it's the same as what we saw here. So does that mean that we're going to see this on and off sort of um, performance or are we going straight back into a bull what move? What's interesting to me is looking at this, you think property group, mm. but look at this. This is, this is the COVID low. Now, you know, obviously property, you yeah. know, with shopping centres, all those sorts of things, commercial property, People were working from home. They were worried about what was going to happen with the property, the mm. commercial property sector, meaning shopping centres and yeah. You know, but property falls generally falls all last sort of stuff. in the in the in yeah. the economy when you look at what was happening with prices that's during the, the GFC. I'm talking about what was going out on the media to yeah. be, compared to what was actually happening on the stock market. Mm. There was a disconnect from that. There was a huge a disconnect. huge disconnect from that because this is showing you 
all this chart, all this data showing you that the media were telling you porcupines. But th- but I'm I'm just going to clear or speculating. You know, Talk about this particular stock and, and mm-hmm. I guess, isolate it from some of the other property stocks because mm-hmm. it's not like a Stockland with, no, it's that's not. residential. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this one is – and this is – historically this stock has been a, an incredible mm. um, company in terms of its performance. So as we can well, see there, well, you compared look over, to Stockland, over all time, Mervac, all, time, all of those years, other – 73.7 percent positive over 19 years. Mm. So it's only five times it's been negative in a yearly – on a yearly – and that was works out at twenty six point three percent. But look at the last ten years, ninety percent positive return over a year in the last. But this 10 years. is where the data is deceiving. Ooh. Why? Have well, we let's got, let's have a look at what happens on the chart. Have we got some juicy bits here? <laughs> now, did you put GMG in here? I don't know. Yep. Probably. Okay, so here's the monthly chart. Now we can see it's been quite steady of late. Looks really mm. nice. Looks like it's setting up. But look at the cliff it fell off. Yeah, into the into right? the into the GFC. Huge big so cliff. this is why, even though the data right now tells you that this should be a stock that you could buy and hold, yeah, the chart is telling you more. It means you have to have rules for exit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Even if you're more of an investor, you Correct. still have to have an exit strategy. Mm. Otherwise, you know, it, it could just blow you out of. The, to see a stock fall 100% well. of what it's risen, that's just... I know. Well, I mean, this is why... This, we've only again, got data again, this is where to... data doesn't lie. Mm. And, you know, people watching what we're talking about, you know, is again, so if you listen to a podcast, get onto YouTube and look at the charts that we're talking about because the data doesn't lie. And if yeah. it's done it in the past, it could do it in the future and it's why it's so important. Even though right now it does look like a great stock that you mm. can sort of more buy and hold... You still need to have an exit strategy. Definitely. Um, and I do. I, I know we all always get comments on YouTube where people go, well, you know, you know, you're just looking at charts. You're not mm. looking at the company and the fundamentals and that. Well, that's because we're technical analysts. And for us to look at on the live show and things, looking at all the fundamentals just takes so long. Yes. You know, and, and it's not necessarily our expertise, if that makes sense. There's some brilliant. But sometimes people, when people are but, talking about fundamentals, they're talking about the opinion yeah, that, that other people have given them mm. on the fundamentals of the company, not the actual yeah. data. Not the actual data. So, but mm. we're showing you this is what the stock actually did, not uh, speculation yes. by analysts and people like that. Okay, but, I'm, no, I'm going to make an executive decision and move on. You can do that. So Should now we look, we've got yeah. ALL. Okay. Okay. Aristocrat Leisure. Aristocrat Leisure. This is a really nice stock mm. as well. Yeah. However, very patchy in that first yeah. 10 years and even out to 15 years from that, that yeah. point there. It's just on and off all the way through. But there was a, years of data all up. there was one year, 2004, where it made a 478, if that's right, percent gain. Um, in 1999, 200%. So it can do but that. But it can. hasn't done yeah. that since, mm. right? So that was way back there. But it's been very patchy mm. over the time. But still, we've got that 60-40 balance 60, 40 which is balance still okay. Again, which is still and over the really last good. 10 years, 70, 30, so which is improved. really nice. The second one that's improved it's over the last It's getting better. Years. Well, I'll look at it. When you look at this, you can see you mm, can a bit more on the this. risk side of it. Yep. More volatile. Yep. Maybe a bit more of a trading stock rather than a buy and hold, given that the mm. balance here and there's some really big moves down, yeah. um, I would say, mm. in minus 40. So there's, there's three, three occurrences of that happening, which is enough to say to us, well, you so know, you've got a definitely plus one hundred percent. It's, got, a, it's mm. got three of those as well, so you can get plus one hundred percent three hundred three times. At yeah, least. well, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? So that's pretty good. I like mm. this stock, and it does yes, show so you that you I. can make good money, and it shows you why you need to have a balance of different stocks in your portfolio yeah. to underpin it, good growth. But then some of these sorts of stocks to give it just that to give it a, a boost, yeah, of a kick up. This is like having a Barocca in the morning after a big night. Well, out. that's generally how we design portfolios when mm. we're working on it, and how we teach students to look at it, don't we? Yeah. I wish mm. great leisure will be up. In your book, you yeah. talk about the yeah. breakdown of a portfolio. So in that first book, the How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20%, mm. there's a section in there where you talk about different types of portfolios and how yes, you can I model do. them. Well, four different portfolio styles. So. Yeah. Now, yeah. I like the chart of this, yeah. um, but at the moment it's stalled and there's some really Why serious resistance there. Why don't you tell people to there. get my book for free? They've just got to pay the shipping. That's your job. That's, you can do it. Okay. But just go you to the website. You can get the book for free. Just pay the shipping. Go to our website and you can order it. There you go. I did it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So there's a, um, ALL. Um, it's obviously Leisure. not for everybody because some people don't like gambling-related stocks. And I would, I would like, 
I was waiting for that. I would like to put a show together. Yes. If you're happy to do this, where we talk about some of the gambling stocks. Absolutely. I'm in there. Um, and I know that some people might not like they it. They could gamble with it. Because they don't like gambling stocks, but it's really important to, if they want to be mm. against gambling stocks, we can give you ammunition about that as well. We can. Oh, that's juicy, juicy. Yeah, it is juicy. All right. So we've seen ALL, but this is one of the best ones. Obviously, it's well, the it's bigger one. It's getting ready for that. Bit to buy, isn't it? I mean, once it gets to the thirty-nine dollar mark, I think this is going to start to take off. I mean, there's a lot of resistance around that sort of thirty-nine dollar area, but that's mm. looking really good. Okay, I like this. You like it? Good. Yeah. So do I. All right. So New Crest. NCM, Three more to go. New Crest Mining. This is not for everybody. Gonna, I'll zoom it up. I'll let you do that so you can have a glass of water. So looking at New Crest Mining, obviously we've got data back to eighty-seven. Look, there's a lot of red in this sort of first, you know, period through here. So we're getting a lot of red there. So there's 15 occurrences and it's only, it was only positive one, two, three, four, five times. So yep. very negative. And then we started seeing a lot. Big block. But big that was block. pre the GFC. So most stocks were going yeah. up then. Mm. And then the last three years. Very three patchy years again. Negative returns. Currently this year it's up 36%. Yep. Um, I'm not sure exactly when this data finished. I think it was about two mm. weeks ago. But out of 37 years of data that we have, it was, it's positive 54% of the time, negative yep. 45% of the time. So and we can see that's more of a trading type mm. stock, obviously, then. Yeah, in the last 10 years, 60-40 again. It's getting again, better. 60-40 again. But it's a little bit better than what it was over the whole history. But you can understand mm. that when you look at the chart. So can we just look, go straight through to the... Oh, you want to look oh, at you that? Oh, you want to just quick... I thought you'd want to see this bit of a Again, chart. again risk. Another, another risk. It's one. showing risk, isn't it? All right, so let's just go through to the chart. And yeah, there it is. There it is. Now, we can see here, that if we look over the history of this, yeah, it really suffered in the GFC. So the, here's the high here, March 2008. But, of course, it actually rose when the rest of the market was falling initially. It did. But then it really struggled after that um, for some mm -hmm. time. And this is a huge period of volatility. Look at the um, range of the decline. So this is def this is one of the harder stocks to trade yep. in terms of rules because mm -hmm. you'll have a period of time where it'll rise, but it might be only for a few months, and then it does this sort of thing, well, or it's you doing get this that really now. jagged. Well, sorry, I'm not, it's doing this. What you saw here, mm. it's doing that right now, isn't it? Well, Pretty it's much. just it's just finished it and come out of it, yeah. but then it might only go up for what what's that about seven months or something, eight months. And it did it there as well. And then it stops and you get nothing out and of it. you get nothing out of it. Mm. So just be careful at the moment on this Definitely one. Definitely trading so, one. Because is this one where some people see it rising? Because this has risen reasonably well. Where is your, there, there is your tool there. It's risen from, risen from that 1545 right up to there. It's 92%. Mm. So you might, is this the sort of stock that you get people jumping in at last thinking what's moving only for Definitely. it to start to fall away. Yep. And that's the careful thing you've got to look at. And so Then the, you're just helping the managed funds to get out. You're helping the managed funds to mm. get out. So you're not excited about this. I'm not excited about this. Just because well. of the risk. Just yep. because of the risk at the moment. So, All right. But good to trade if you've got some good rules on it. Okay. Amcor is yeah. the next one. So okay. Two more to go. Two more. Amcor. Now, Amcor is going to be a little bit patchy as well because of the mm. history, but then it started to improve and then we just had, you know, one year oh, – down and a couple of years up. 38 years of data on this one. Yeah, so we're looking at the history over here. We can see 60% up over the whole history and 40% down. It's not a, an issue really because it stayed pretty it, consistent. The last 10 years it stayed exactly the same. Mm. It's the only one that hasn't changed. The other ones have either gone up or down. Yeah, the summary mm. looks consistent, but does that look consistent when you're looking at the actual data? No, mm, it doesn't, does it? It doesn't really look consistent, does it? So let's go over to our graph again and we'll see what's going on. Now, the risk is not huge on this no. one. We've got it's 0 to 10%, um, but we've had 10 occurrences of that. Yeah. And then the other way, um, we had 10 occurrences of it in the oh, positive. So Zero to positive 10. You know, so you might not make a lot of money out of tr out of this one okay, if you're so holding your portfolio, it. portfolio, you've got consistent mm -hmm. ones that don't have much downside or much upside. Yep. Then you've got ones that have Balanced. got more downside or more upside. And this one's sort of like in the middle. It's like mm. in a seesaw. This is the pivot point in the middle. It's, it it's is. a bit there. So it's one that's not going to kill you, but it's not going to make you a lot of money, although it has had one occurrence or, or one occurrence of going up to 80%. I actually still really mm. like this stock. Okay, so mm. let's just have a look at the chart. Yeah. Um, so it's a trading stock. Now, you didn't put this one in for me, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I have to check. Okay, so let's bring it up. That's okay. We'll I said get there was done. about four that were conjectures. It's a great thing that your computer's got the setting already ready that I didn't have to go and grab the template. 
So that's a real pl- plus. I'm giving Thank you a you. My housekeeping, you're saying you, you're congratulating yeah, housekeeping's my housekeeping really is good. really, really good. Okay. All right. So let's go through this yeah. one. The very volatile, and you can understand why those results were as they were. So but from not buy and hold, February 94, no, look at it. Good, no. February 94, all the way into March 2009, it was a trading stock through there, but still mm. it wouldn't have been easy to trade through that period of there. No. Nah. But this is where the personality will change over time because of the patterns, the bigger um, drive, if you like, of these patterns. So March 2009, that was after the GFC. GFC. Like most stocks, we saw a great rise. Now Mm. through COVID, it's been really volatile, but more sideways than anything Mm. like healthcare stocks. Yes. And it hasn't really gone on and done a lot, but it's probably still trading around the same level. This has had to re, I won't say reinvent itself to some degree because it is more recycling now, isn't it? More well, so than papers yeah, well, and packaging but, and stuff. But when the economy takes off, stocks like mm, these tend to really out. take off. Yeah, mm. because obviously we need what Angpour produces. Yes. Um, so, but it, it's it's a it's a very very good stock if you want to trade that one. So I do like that. At the okay, moment. great. Mm, we got next. We've got the last one is Coles. Coles. Okay, so and this one's interesting. This because is an offshoot. Well, it is. Is, isn't it? Well, it's it's a stock that's been on our market for you know long 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 time, and yet. Yep. The current iteration of Coles, mm. we've only got five years, four years of data. And it's that. been crap. Sorry and to say been, that. But you're allowed has. to say crap. I, I'm not, I don't have a you know, license on it. I'm not going to yeah. say you can't say and, it. And look, it's not really fair to Coles because we've only got, as you said, the a six years, small amount of data and of it's data. 50-50 so 50-50. far. 50-50. But you would expect that to go at least 60-40, if not 70-30. You would eventually, time, you? you would. So mm. is that does that spell opportunity then? Um, well, you have a look at the chart because I think in this case, because mm. we don't have enough data, yeah. that's the only thing you can rely on. So we go down to coal, we have a look there. It's just long-term sideways. Yeah. Can I just add volume onto it? Because obviously mm. you've got to look at volume and see where that's going. And because and, the more volume we get, the better it's going to work. And obviously in the early days it was down a little bit, but this period through here, we're talking about you know, March 2020, this is all your COVID period mm. through here. But since then, it's just been sideways for coals, which is quite interesting because obviously, you know, people want people to have coals. to eat. People have to eat, so it's been quite steady, but it really hasn't set the lights out, has it? So no. is this thing settling down? It's not a growth it stock. Do? It's mm-hmm. just it's a top, mm-hmm. you know, obviously top twenty, but it's more a plotting stock mm-hmm. that you might have to underpin a portfolio. But would you rather have a bank than this one? Well, I'm looking at this because obviously you would think that with supermarkets, it put a supermarket in an area, mm. it gets to a certain level of turnover. Yeah. But the way to grow the business is to put more supermarkets out there mm. and and keep expanding. And the higher the population, so the there's more capital food investment. Pulled. So there's mm. capital investment there. So it's going to be pretty stable as a stock because of stable inflows. Because mm. people tend to um, how do I say it? They have loyalty to a, sh- a particular supermarket because they know yeah. where everything is on the shops as on the on in the on the shelves so they just keep going they may visit a couple of supermarkets for different things but Look, to me is I mean they're, they're, they're going to pay a good dividend that's mm, what investors are hanging that's sort on of what for. I was getting at it's going to be steady it's going to pay a good dividend it's a cash flow type of business so um, but it'd be interesting to see and to me the other way for they they would expand would obviously to be takeovers of mm. certain things you know whether I think the issue is more a threat industry. yeah of overseas interest coming yeah. into the market because that was going to occur some years ago. Well, Coughlin was going to come in, yeah, but then they, they decided pulled out, and then things were looking a bit shaky. So that just sort yeah. of that created an opportunity for Coles and Woolies by keeping a sort of more well, they stable. Had a duopoly, but they don't have that anymore. No, but it's, it's growing, but it's much so. more stable now for them. Mm-hmm. And I think that that could be the issue still into the future. That's always going to be the threat. Okay. Mm. All right. So that was our the last stock, wasn't it? Fantastic. Anything else you'd like to, to add on to that sort of stuff? Because obviously we're helping people understand what the top 20 stocks are. This was the second part. So if you are listening to this as a podcast in your car on you're on the way to work or in the train or going for your walk with your dog in the morning, do get onto YouTube and type in Wealth Within uh, and it will come up. So this I'm not sure what this podcast will be titled, but it will be able to see all the charts and the and the spreadsheet that we talked about. I guess about. the point, of view, point is you're just trying to show how simple it can be yeah. for – somebody as an individual to Mm. choose a few stocks and, you know, not take on too much risk, sort of Mm. things to look at because obviously risk is the most important thing Mm. that they need to be thinking about managing as they go forward because what's the point in putting your money in the market and then in three or four years' time if the market has a significant correction, Mm. it's all gone. 
Well, I'd love people. And that's what happened in the GFC. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I, I'd love people to actually comment on our YouTube channel underneath this video if you we are watching it and comment on what's the thing that you learned from it because mm. to me what I hope people get out of it is the market's not that scary. If that's you really right. They can invest the data, in the top 20 shares, yeah. a few simple rules. Mm. The data will tell you which ones are the less risky shares to mm. pick and mm. the charts will tell you when. Absolutely, and that's what I'd like people to just to comment. So if they like the video, comment on the video about what they like because mm. that will help us to understand what we're hitting, whether we're hitting the right spots with everybody. But I'd also like you to comment on what you'd like us to see as well, you know, and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube Like as well. us to see or like us to talk about talk in about, future? Sorry, like I'll ask to talk about because I'm happy to do this on more stocks down mm. the track. I'm not going to do it for the next You know, we could, we could talk about some of the stocks in the mid-cap 50 because a lot Absolutely. of people – um, pick stocks in those areas and even beyond. And we can show the difference mm. between some of the shares there in terms of volatility. Well, that's probably a good idea we can do that for mm. Talking Wealth because I did do the mid-cap 50 a couple of weeks ago on my market report showed yeah. the mid-cap 50 and all the opportunities. of all. Mm. And that's really the value of subscribing to Talking Wealth. It's like, was it $3.50 a week or something? Or like yeah. 50 cents a day and like... You, Just you know, to have all that. And you get people on YouTube and they're going, mm. oh, I, I've watched all your videos for years and I love it and da, da, da. But, but it's they, not just but, you though, that they're watching. That's they're the not thing. just us that they're watching. Yeah. You know, it's it's there's so much more on, on talkingwealth.com and people go, well, now it's behind a paywall. Well, yeah, because it was valuable to you to watch it for two years or three years or however long you're watching it, but now it's not valuable because it's behind a paywall Yeah, to pay 50-something cents a day because we're showing people just one of these stocks that we've shown today, I know that they'll pay for their subscription. I'm but talking to me, by decade. paying for it, it actually proves that they're valuing their time. They're not just listening mm. to something that's a throwaway because we can sit there and watch mm. things on YouTube that are free and nobody does anything about it, but you that's, know. Yeah, that, that's and, junk food TV, this is, isn't it? This is more likely to actually – no, actually, I don't agree with you on that, but this is more YouTube likely is to – junk food. This is more likely to get people to actually do something constructive. If you want to learn how to tie a tie, then go to YouTube. But if you want to learn how to make money, don't go to YouTube, mm. you know, because it's just silly. It's just financial suicide in my – my um, my opinion anyway, because, I mean, really, it, what we're showing people today, I can guarantee there's probably f- half of those stocks at least that any one of those stocks mm-hmm. people could invest in in the next few days and pay for their subscription on Talking Well for a decade mm. easily. Yep. And yet, so what's the value of that? So huge. It's huge. And that's what I'm saying is Talking Wealth is huge. So if you're not subscribed to Talking Wealth, get over to TalkingWealth.com, subscribe. There's a free seven-day trial or subscription. I know, that's a great thing to have. Which means you can see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But if if you're a TalkingWealth.com subscriber and a yearly subscriber I'm talking about, you can get the spreadsheet. So you've got to, what you've got to do, I want you to like the video, share the video, take a screenshot of you doing that, Mm -hmm. and then email through to info at TalkingWealth.com going spreadsheet. Dale, please, can I have the spreadsheet? Um, and I'd also like them to do a testimonial on the video mm. as well, which I've had quite a few people doing that at the moment um, from when I did it on our market. But they market don't have report. to do the testimonial. Yeah, they do. They've got to say how much they love Janine. Also, you don't have to do the testimonial. We'll give you the spreadsheet. Uh, you're sure you'll give me a hard time for a, for a long time, won't you, anyway? <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway, but I do hope you've enjoyed our take on the second 10 stocks in the top 20 stocks. Uh, again, you've been listening to Talking Wealth. Um, you know, to us, what we talked about today is really, really important and, and Janine brought up some fantastic points today. So if you do have ideas of what you'd like us to do on our podcast, please just shoot emails through to us at, um, you know, info at talkingwealth.com. Jenny and I are happy to look at that sort of stuff. But I think we need to wrap it up for today. So, but for now, thank you for listening to Talking Wealth. You've been on with Dale Gillen, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within, and Janine Cox, the Senior Analyst and the super sensational person who sits beside me every single day or every single week. But uh, for now, goodbye, good luck and good trading. <laughs>